total joists are lightweight and easy to maneuver. They have been specially designed to work easily with wood framing of residential, multi-residential and small commercial structures. Total joists come pre-cut to length and with pre-punched service holes, making installation easy for all trades. Due to its robust design, Total Joist is the only UL and ULC rated steel floor system with wood sheathing that has a one hour fire rating and a 50 STC acoustic rating, while requiring only a single layer of 5 eighths of an inch gypsum board. The installation of the Total Joist floor system can be completed in five easy steps. Your total joists are typically delivered in bundles of 8 to 15 pieces, depending on size. The joists are usually handled on site with telescopic handlers or forklifts, with forks inserted below the joists or through straps around the joist bundle. As total joists are impervious to moisture, they can be stored on site indefinitely without swelling, rot or mold. Total joists and accessories should be stored in an upright position off the ground until ready to be installed. Total joists have been designed to facilitate wood framing as much as possible. They sit directly on wood walls, use engineered rim board around the perimeter and have wood sheathing glued and nailed to the top flange. Thus, the installation of total joists is similar to wood joists. One major difference with total joists is that detailed installation drawings with individual joist layouts are provided with delivery. Each joist is pre-cut to length and is identified by stamped labels at one end. This means no more measuring and cutting on site and thus reduces waste. Additionally, each total joist comes with pre-cut service holes that match the hole locations in adjacent joists. By installing them with the markings all facing one direction, as identified on the drawings, the holes will be aligned to facilitate future trades with their services. To start, lay out the foundation or wall plates as per the prescribed starting location and joist spacing noted on the drawings. Although total joists have unique end connectors that can be adjusted for site conditions, it's important that the location of the supporting elements, such as walls and beams, match the architectural drawings as close as possible. To connect the joist to the rim board, Total Joist provides a steel connector which is screwed to the joist and to the rim board. For each joist height, there are two types of end connectors, full height and regular. With the unique Total Joist design, the full height connector spans the full height of the joist and also acts like a squash block for platform framing. The regular end connector, which can be attached to either side of the joist, is used for balloon framing as no squash block is required. To install total joists, attach the connectors directly to the rim board or to the joists before they are lifted into place. If attaching the connectors to the joists first, it's easiest to do so while the joists are laying flat. Decide where you want to start, find the appropriate joist markings from the drawings, and transfer the joists to the location. As total joists are lightweight, two people can handle them with ease. It's a good idea to lay all the joists in a span the same way to simplify installation later. The sides of a joist can be easily identified as one side has total joist markings and one does not. As total joists are made from steel, they do not need to be crowned. For longer spans, it might be necessary to make a temporary catwalk to support the joists while they are laying flat. Align the connector flush with the end of the joist and start two screws in the slotted holes using the number 12 one inch self-tapping screws provided. Keep the screws to the ends of the slots at the flush end. This will allow maximum joist movement later. Total Joist's unique adjustable connectors give you plus or minus one to one and a half inches of tolerance to meet varying site conditions. As the joists come with a 3 8 of an inch clearance at the ends, extend the connector approximately 3 8 of an inch past the joist and snug tighten. Do not over tighten as you want to be able to move the connector later if you need to. Now you can start installing the rim board in typical fashion, lying it out to match the plates below. For larger projects and longer spans where it's hard to lay the joists out for connector installation, it's easiest to put the connectors on the rim board first. 
This can be done before or after the rim board is attached to the wall. To lay out for the connectors, mark the rim board two inches over from the proposed edge of the joist and square down. Place the connector on the mark and screw to the rim board with the number 12 one inch wood screws provided. Try to center the connector on the rim board to allow for the joist flange to extend below and above the connector. Now install the rim board in typical fashion, as noted on the plans. Total joists can also be doubled or tripled up to act as beams in lieu of engineered wood beams. The members are fastened together by the use of total joist Z connectors. Fasten the first Z connector to the first beam between 6 and 12 inches from the end. If less than 6 inches, the Z connector will interfere with the regular end connector. All the other clips should be spaced no more than 24 inches apart. To ensure the fasteners do not interfere with the joist supported by the beam, it's often easiest to match the joist spacing and place the connectors directly between the proposed joist locations. Once you have the Z connectors fastened to the first member, mark their location on the flange before placing the next beam member on top. Add the next member, make flush and screw the beam to the clips below. If you have a three-ply beam member, you can add the next set of Z connectors with the same screws. Now you are ready to start installing the joists. If you fasten the connectors directly to the joists, lift them into place starting at the exterior. Snug tighten the end connector to the rim board and attach using the number 12 one inch screws provided. Once the ends are fastened, tighten the screws in the slotted connectors on the joist and add additional screws as specified. Note that if you need to sight the rim board, such as at an exterior wall or opening, do not add additional screws until this has been done. If you fasten the end connectors directly to the rim board, lift the joists into place and attach to the connectors with the number 12 one inch self-tapping screws provided. With this method, scaffolding with wheels provides an easy, mobile and safe way to install the joists. As well as attaching the end connectors, you should nail the joists to the exterior walls and any interior load-bearing walls with 2-inch nails as provided by Total Joist. Once the joists have been nailed down, you can install the overlap connectors. These tie the joists together and act as web stiffeners. Next, you should sight and straighten the rim board along the exterior by hammering the tabs on the end connectors. Once the rim board is straight, tighten the screws in the joist and add the remaining required screws in the non-slotted holes. This step must be completed before the plywood floor sheathing can be installed. Blocking and bridging should also be installed with the joists. This helps reduce vibration in the floor induced by the longer spans. Bridging lines are located every 8 feet along the joist and solid blocking is installed at 8 feet along the bridging lines. The blocking and bridging is typically installed from below, but the blocking can also be installed from above as the floor is being sheathed. It is important to carry the bridging lines to the outside walls to help stabilize the floor. At the first joist space, ladder blocking is often installed to help provide lateral support to parallel walls and provide an anchor for the bridging. This ladder blocking can either be total joist blocking or wood blocking cut to suit. The blocks are typically nailed to the rim board at the exterior and attached to the first joist with a regular end connector. The bridging is nailed to the underside of the joists using a nail gun. Alternately, as resilient channel is typically installed as part of the fire and acoustic ratings, the standard hex head screws could be used. Around stairwells, the total joists are typically kept back one and one eighth of an inch to allow for a rim board to be installed. Once the joists are installed, place 3 quarter inch plywood backing inside the flanges and fasten to the web with the nail gun. Now you can nail the rim board along the interior to create a wood backing for installing stairs or drywall. Now that the joists have been installed, you are ready to sheath the floor. Total joists can be used with several different sheathing types, including plywood or OSB sheathing, cement bonded particle board, and steel decking. Wood sheathing is common for wood frame projects and Total Joist recommends 3 quarter inch tongue and groove subflooring to help create a stiffer floor and for larger joist spacings. Start sheathing along the exterior wall. As steel does not shrink, gluing is not required but is still recommended to help remove imperfections in the sheathing. 
You may need to lay out the plywood for the joist as you start in order to maintain joist spacings. The sheathing can be nailed down, the same as usual, using a nail gun. Total Joist provides the required nails which are made of tempered steel and are spiral shaped to help prevent pullout. As the joists are not stable without the sheathing, do not attempt to walk on the floor until the sheathing has been installed. Alternately, you can install a 2x4 along the center of the joists to maintain spacing and stabilize them. For longer span joists, you may want to add a row of bridging at the top to help stabilize the floor. Total Joist also provides a plywood overlap connector to maintain backing at the joints of overlapping joists. By following these installation instructions, you will create a building structure that is space-saving, reliable, and environmentally friendly. For more information, visit totaljoist.com.